Depression, a debilitating illness that could strike anyone, and it's on the increase. It's currently the fourth most important cause of disability worldwide, and expected to become the second most important by 2020. Now new studies in the southwest of England are researching different approaches to the treatment of depression, approaches that may have a significant impact on this debilitating illness. Combining expertise in psychiatry, exercise psychology, health economics and primary care, collaboration between the universities of Bristol and Exeter along with the Peninsula Medical School will conduct one of the largest ever studies into the use of exercise as a treatment for depression. Exercise has a number of different benefits, not just uh, potentially effects on mental health. It has, obviously, we know that it helps people keep, keep weight off. Uh, it might help strengthen bone and musculoskeletal uh, dimensions of health. So if we have a, a, a drug that's just designed to treat depression, it doesn't also add positive benefits to, to weight gain and um, musculoskeletal health. So. Uh, it makes sense to have an intervention that involves a number of different health benefits. But really we're particularly interested here is in does exercise help people reduce depression with some other symptoms associated with depression such as anxiety and low self-esteem. The researchers are keen to stress that they're not talking about extreme fitness classes or turning patients into competitive athletes. As little as 30 minutes of brisk walking a day might have an effect. And it doesn't have to be done in the gym. Walking in the local park with a friend at lunchtime could have equally beneficial effects. We're looking at increasing the general approach to exercise, but in a fairly, in, in a moderate level uh, for, for, the, for folk who have depression over a period of time. Uh, we're not looking to make people into athletes. We just want to improve the amount of exercise and activity that they're undertaking on a day-to-day -day basis. And we think that, that can, there is good evidence that that is likely to have potential beneficial effects in this group of patients. More than 750 patients will be recruited to take part in a groundbreaking trial to investigate whether exercise can help in the treatment of depression, alone or in conjunction with medication. Reviews of the current evidence suggest exercise may be an effective treatment, but rigorous studies have yet to be carried out. Certainly um, where people have been prescribed medication, there is an increasing view uh, amongst patients that uh, they'd prefer to have an option, a treatment option, that involved some sense of control, um, some degree of self-management, that they, they felt they, they were doing something for their own benefit, rather than just um, taking medication, which may have some side effects. So there is really an advantage, and there's a growing interest in, in alternative therapies, like exercise, aerobic type exercise, um, to, to actually help people's physical, physical self. I think people are increasingly recognising that depression is very common and very disabling. Um, and, and it's important that we work out the best ways of treating depression. There's also a lot of reluctance, I think, amongst people to take antidepressant drugs. And they want to have alternatives to antidepressants. So our strategy is really to work out, well, who, who are the people who really do need drugs and will benefit from drugs? and also to look at alternatives. So for those people who don't want to take tablets or who will not benefit, might be benefit from alternative approaches. Where drugs are considered to be the answer, the University of Bristol are also conducting research in order to establish whether or not, in the case of antidepressants, there are genetic predictors to indicate which patients would benefit from which drugs. By sampling patient DNA, they hope to more accurately match the treatment to the individual. There's now a lot of interest in whether we can use the much improved data on people's genetic makeup that's come from the Human Genome Project to see whether we can target drugs more um, accurately. At the moment, the trial data suggests that we can only say something about groups of people, but we know that some people get better on tablets and others don't, or some people might get bad side effects with tablets and others don't. And it's very likely that people's genetic makeup affect that kind of response to drugs. In the UK alone, depression costs the health service some £80 million a year in antidepressant prescriptions, a situation echoed in primary care around the world. More efficient targeting of the drugs we use, as well as thorough investigation of alternative approaches to treatment, must be a priority for the future.